Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jim on the Air. I'm Jim Siriani, your host, your host with the most. I have to say that every single time, and I'm, I'm contractually obligated to say it because I, <laughs> until I come up with a better joke. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for joining us on the show this week. Um, this week, and for the next week or two, I'm dedicating a huge chunk of the show to the Reemerge Dance Festival, which is coming up at Center Stage Theater. And I have to say, it's been a lot of fun talking with all the folks who are involved with it um, and to find out what their pieces are about and to learn their process. And um, I hope you do too. I hope you are enjoying uh, the content on the show. Um, by the way, the Reemerge Dance Festival takes place June 17th through the 20th at uh, Center Stage Theater. And um, there's four different programs and you can attend all four or just one or two or you know pick and choose. And um, all the information about the festival is on the Center Stage website, centerstagetheater.org. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. There's also a blog tab on the website and you can find out all about the artists that we are interviewing for the show. And some of their uh, interviews will be also included as part of the festival as well. And my guest today is Meredith. Uh, cabinets, but also, um, Meredith, your newly married name is Ventura, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So I just got a way longer name now. So <laughs> currently, Meredith Cabinets Ventura, and one of them's going to win at some point. We'll, we'll, we'll decide. Let's see which one. Uh, Meredith Cabinets Ventura, and um, she's joining me on the show today to talk about her piece, which will be part of the festival. And uh, before we get into it, though, Meredith, uh, tell us about marriage life. How's that been so far for you? It's a couple months or so? Yeah, it'll be two months next week. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, I married my best friend. We've been best friends for, oh gosh, um, 12 years now. So nice. um, yeah, super fun. Um, it's basically the same as engaged life, simply because we, we live with uh, my in-laws right now. So we moved in at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, kind of huddled together. And so it really feels the same. <laughs> but now when people address letters, it's Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. and Mrs. Ventura. So. Right. Now, um, even though your last name is Ventura, do you actually live in Ventura? <laughs> I don't. I live in Oxnard. I know. Hilarious. Oh, in Oxnard. Um, we you hope to, to move, move back to Ventura. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. We used to live in Ventura and then we moved, uh, but hopefully we will be Mr. and Mrs. Ventura in Ventura. And if we of move Ventura. to Ventura <laughs> Avenue, then we could be on Ventura Avenue, which would be great. That would be awesome. That would be so yeah. cool. That would be a great little <laughs> way to you know introduce yourself every time. I feel <laughs> like we, we would Avenue. put our address on stuff and people would be like, Wait, what? <laughs> um, so you are involved with the uh, dance festival. Now you are also um, a member of the board at, at Center Stage. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. My first board meeting with Center Stage was the week before the pandemic. And we were kind of like, well, we don't know what's going to happen. And then we haven't met in person since that day. I believe it was like March 8th. Right. And that was the day. I understand like you were involved yeah. with the like the creating the name for the festival. Did you come up with that or? Yeah, um, it's funny. I feel like me and Terry have a really good rapport. I love working for someone like Terry because she is just such a go getter and such like yeah. big like good energy all the time. And you know, I feel like Terry has advocated so much for the arts and specifically for center stage in the past year. But she came, we were talking about making the festival and she's like, I just don't have a name. You need to help me come up with a name. And so <laughs> we thought reemerge would be kind of the, the best uh, way to describe what we're doing. Just yeah. um, having the whole dance world of, you know, as we, as we can start to come back to stages, like what does that feel sure. like? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what, that's a perfect name for it, uh, reemerge dance festival. Um, uh, but let's go back a little bit, back in time. And um, tell me a, a little bit about your, artistic path what has been your path as an artist like if you were to start from like oh, wow. age five um <laughs> so for his age five well um my actually my grandfather was a dance teacher he had a dance studio in akron ohio and it was called norwood dixon school for stage dancing so that's how far i have to go back i actually found his program from his uh like recital in 1937 oh, wow. um, which is super cool to see but um so our family dance studio has been in operation for i think like 86 years um 
Wow. Yeah. So it was like, was my grandfather and then passed on to my aunt. And yeah, so I'm kind of like one of the family members keeping the tradition of dance alive. But I mean, my parents put me in dance when I was very young and I did the classic studio experience. And then I went right. to UCSB, which really flipped me on my head. Um, I was really? a ballerina. I did tap dance. And yeah, I know. Funny to see me now. Um, <laughs> anyone who knows me now is like, ballet? Really? Um, but yeah, so I went to UCSB and had my first modern dance class and then just kind of never really looked back from there. I had some amazing professors when I was at UCSB that I still talk to and am friends with now. Um, the first one, the first modern dance class I had was with Mira Kingsley. And she just like, the first day I just walk around, like walk away bleeding and like bruised from rolling on the floor and not knowing how, and just absolutely in love with dance. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like how I started in the more modern and contemporary realm. And I think as I get older, I still kind of question like what kind of dance I really do because people ask me, they're like, oh, what kind of dance? And I'm like, well, currently I really have to do everything because I, uh -huh. I teach ballet, I teach hip hop, I teach jazz, I teach contemporary, and we don't really know what even contemporary means because it just means you're mixing stuff together. Um, really is, is, and it's like, whatever's happening now is contemporary. Um, but yeah, so uh -huh. I kind of, my participation in the dance world is really just out of pure joy for moving. Um, and if, I mean, you, we've never really met in person, Jim, but if you saw yeah. me in person, you'd understand why. Cause I'm always moving. <laughs> like, I just can't stop. But that's, yeah, that's, so that's, so true, kind of, yeah. that's me. Yeah. So that kind of leads to my next question sort of, um, and, and you kind of already touched on it, but what would you say is your, your favorite style or genre of dance and why, if you had to pick just one? Um, I have to say, I will always have a deep love in my heart for ballet, and I will always be de very deeply disappointed in myself that I didn't dance ballet professionally, but it just wasn't wasn't my wheelhouse. I loved it, um, and I teach it every day, but there's just something about ballet that just didn't like me, I think, but I, uh -huh. <laughs> other than ballet, I really love, um, I know it's, oh, it's not sad, it's just, you know, there's certain kinds of dance that really require um, you to give up other things to do them. Ballet is one of them where you really have to just, you have to really do ballet. And for me, there was certain parts of it that just didn't work for my body and just didn't work for what I wanted to do. And that's totally cool. Um, a little sad, but not too sad. Um, yeah. But well, really for me, where my joy for dance is, is contemporary and modern dance. Um, contemporary. Modern dance is more the lineage side where you're studying a kind of technique of modern dance. And I love that. But as you kind of move into a more contemporary realm, you take modern dance, you take jazz, you take ballet, and you have all these different influences as you kind of make something that feels very reflective of um, the human psyche, in my opinion. Um, so like for me, when I make contemporary dance, I'm focused on styles and techniques, but I'm really utilizing them as a tool rather than focusing on the like virtuosity of them, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah, that totally does. And um, so I'm, I'm talking with Meredith Cabanis Ventura, <laughs> and we're talking about dance and um, her piece, which is coming up at the uh, Dance Festival. And um, to learn more about the festival, you can go to the Center Stage website, centerstagetheater.org. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. And uh, Meredith, I forgot before we uh, went on today to ask, uh, what night is uh, your piece going to be featured? We perform on, well, we actually are part of almost every night of the show because we are doing a dance film as well that we're premiering. Um, it's a the recorded version of one of our pieces. Um, but we are part of the physical show on Saturday night where my piece will be and then um, Sunday afternoon. Okay, so your dance film will be, and then that's the first night on the 17th, will be featured during that yes. night. And then your yeah. piece is on Saturday the 19th and also again on Sunday the 20th? Is that um, there'll be, um, we actually had another dancer in the show. Um, Oh, okay. make a piece so yeah she I think let me just double check that I'm right about that because sometimes I'm wrong I'll be I'll be honest well, that's okay. um, no, so... there's so much information going around it's like, <laughs> I know there's so all. much which is delightful so Chloe Roberts yeah. um her dance film is going to be on Friday the, six, the 18th um my piece oh. Infinite Corridor will be on Saturday and then um the last piece which is by Amanda Keller called Human will be on Sunday okay and um, and your piece, which is called Infinite Corridor, is that correct? That'll be on Saturday. Yes. Okay. Yes. Alrighty. And um, 
And speaking of Infinite Corridor, um, I was I was reading your artist uh, statement earlier before we went on, and um, you had mentioned that you had gone through a kind of a traumatic experience, which we don't need to uh, delve into the your personal life. But um, so I, I understand that the you had a traumatic experience, and that kind of sort of inspired your piece. Expand on that for us a little bit. Um, for sure, uh, that experience that I had, um, it was really the first time where I like became aware of my own mortality, which may seem kind of silly. But um, for me, it was really a moment where I had been so focused on the present, um, really like, you know, trying to survive in Santa Barbara as an artist and getting my work done and teaching and creating and having friends and trying to have a social life, just all the things that you're doing when you're, you know, at the time I was 28. Um, and I had this moment where I was really confronted, and this is pre-pandemic, which is really interesting to me, where I was really confronted with the fact that like, I was not worried about, I looked into the future and I didn't know what I saw really is what it is. Um, and it scared me and it really was traumatic for me in that in the moment when this event happened, I really thought I was gonna die. Um, and I had wow. never really thought about death. Um, the previous year, my dad passed away and I had kind of used that the work that I created in Selah that season to really deal with that loss, um, which is still outside of myself. Um, but really confronted with my the law my own you know death and loss was you know I know it sounds really morbid but it was really an interesting experience to try to come back from and this happening right before the pandemic is what I find most interesting because I feel like people will be able to relate to the work in a different way um, even though that's not really what it's about it's not my COVID piece um, but yeah so I'm interested to see kind of what audiences will think kind of coming from that. And, right. And then uh, that was uh, my next question. What are you hoping that the uh, audience will take away from wh whether it's this piece or any of your other pieces or the film? Um, what are you hoping that when they're walking out of the theater that they maybe that they say or that they um, take away from from it? Um, it's interesting because I was actually just asked the other day about like why I started the company and why I make work and it's not really, you know, in service to my own ego, maybe a little bit, <laughs> but it's really about um, making dance accessible and relatable to all people. And for me, what I, my goal for every show is uh, for people to walk away and have one moment where they felt something. I don't care what it is, but they felt something. If it's, you know, joy, if it's like um, nostalgia, if it's, you know, something like really like deeply sad or even something that makes them really angry. Like I really just want something because what was really frustrating to me and part of the reason I started Sela was I had so many friends come to shows and watch the show and then walk away and be like, I didn't really get it. And not only say, I didn't really get it, but not be willing to engage in it because it wasn't accessible to them. And I think that's, you know, equal parts, the observer and also the creator has to create well, it has to be willing to understand, but I think for me, just like, how can I create that through movement and through Sela? And I, I love when people are like, wow, I love that moment it was so cool or it was so acrobatic or so strong, but like, I want people to relate to a moment and be willing to question why. Right, oh, okay, that's good. And um, tell us, uh, you, you mentioned your, your dance uh, group, uh, Sela. Tell us about that and how did Sela come, come to be? Um, so Sela is a, you know, it's like, I like call it my baby, but it's not, it's not really like of me, you know, it's just kind of, it's whoever's in the company that season that we are creating is really who dictates the personality of the company. And I have just been really lucky the past couple of years to have just amazing people in the company. And when I first started it, like having the support of friends and people who, the reason I started the company with who I started it with was really truly because we didn't feel like we had the outlet we needed to do what we wanted. Um, and uh, that's for me, a lot of what, you know, accessibility is, is like not just having like the opportunity to do something, but having to do the opportunity to do something that you really want to do, like you deeply need to do. Um, and so for me, that's why I started Selah and kind of why I keep it. I mean, it's really hard uh, people ask me sometimes like what's the hardest thing about running a dance company it's really the interpersonal things like making sure everyone feels like the work is worth it like that I can pay them what they think is worth and that they feel fulfilled and that we all feel like it's part of us instead of just something they come and do for a couple hours a week and then walk away um, but yeah so for me 
the reason I still have the company and do what we do when we have these shows and I invite other people in to partake is just like, cause I, I really do enjoy dance and I really do enjoy seeing how other people do it and how people put it on their bodies for size. You know, it just, it's interesting to me. Nice. Nice. And um, we're chatting with uh, Meredith Cabanis Ventura, and we're talking about the Reemerge Dance Festival, which takes place at Center Stage Theater, June 17th through the 20th. And you can get ticket information and make reservations and find out more about the festival on the Center Stage website, centerstagetheater.org. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. And be sure to click on the blog tab as well. So you can learn more about the various groups that are involved with the festival, all kinds of details about uh, what's going on with it. And again, centerstagetheater.org. Uh, so let me also ask you, Meredith, about... Um, uh, the pandemic, you know, for artists, for creators, um, it was kind of, it was a rough year. And um, how, how did you do during the whole shutdown? Oh man, um, it's you know, it's like I, I kind of ref, I kind of refer to the past year as a, a lost year. You know, like I just feel like we we lost so much and so much was erased. But I I, I feel guilty, Jim, but I had a really good year actually. You know, I got engaged before the pandemic started and just kind of spent that early quarantine time with my like now husband. And that was very, like very, it was a very scary time, I think, because we just didn't know what was going on and we didn't know how we were gonna be affected, but it was like a really good time for he and I to like figure out what was really important to us. And then, you know, like teaching dance on Zoom is not my favorite thing, but it is something that I feel now that I'm good at because I've put so many hours into it. I was teaching on Zoom 20 hours a week early on. We just put all of our classes online and, that was some that was some crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. For sure. A lot I'm of kids, sure. a lot of five-year-olds trying to mute and unmute themselves and ask to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, you're in your own house. You don't have to ask. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's I think it's like I had a really hard year. I think everyone did, but I also really enjoyed how I and my now husband and some of the people around me, like what we did with that year. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. That, no, it's that, bittersweet. I Thing. Yeah, and and I think um, a lot of folks had very similar experiences. I know, I think I did too. I think I felt like um, at first it was like, "Whoa, my God, what are we doing?" And then as it went on, it's like, "Okay, I, I guess we can all kind of deal with this." And I'm I'm excited for live performance to come back to indoor theater. Um, it is difficult to watch something, whether it's dance or a play or what have yeah. you, on Zoom. It's just it doesn't. Uh, it's you don't get different. the audience reaction. You don't have yeah. reaction. And that's really why I chose the music I chose for Infinite Corridor in particular, mm -hmm. because it's really music that will not, you cannot listen to it on Zoom. It will not work, um, which is, okay. we're still going to live stream the show and it's still going to be good. And it's still going to, I think it will still work and it will still be good work, but there's something so um, beautiful about being immersed in the dark and hearing the music and, you know, feeling the bass and watching the dancers be so close to you. And I'm really excited for that. We, um, we nice. actually had the opportunity to rehearse in the theater early um, and we hadn't quite finished the work yet. It was a little bit, it was like in May and the dancers were just so excited. There's like nothing, there's nothing like it to be yeah. in the theater and to have the stage lights on and to like be immersed fully in the work. And I and yeah. I actually really love that we were in there earlier than we usually are, because I think it gave us a bit more perspective on like what it will take to have our first performance back. Um, yeah. Nice, nice. Cool. And um, who uh, uh, wrote the music for you? Um, I used um, a bunch of different artists of music. So getting the rights to music is like the hardest thing in the world. Yeah, it is. It's not <laughs> the, things they, the things they tell you when yeah. you are started a dance company. Um, so usually when I pick music for a piece, I will reach out to the artist individually. So we actually, um, I used a lot of John Hopkins. If you've ever heard of him, he is okay. a British composer um, and I used his music for my first show back in 2015 and I like when back in 2015 I just reached out to him on Facebook I was like hi can you use your music it's cool um, but yeah so I have a blend of like Niels Fromm and John Hopkins and a bunch of other um, artists it's it, I straddle kind of that like very abstract kind of piano-y abstract techno song it's yeah it's a lot oh neat oh wow a nice yeah blend it's it'll like be yeah, it's a very interesting blend of music. I think people will enjoy it. The dancers think it's hard to count. <laughs> count to, oh. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, well. <laughs> they'll yeah, learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, they're, they're fine. They just have to remember, wait, is it four this time or is it three this time? I'm like, three. Right, right. Now, tell us about um, your film that will be featured on the 18th. Uh, can you uh, expand on that a little bit? Um, so this is one of the pieces created by one of the company members, Chloe Roberts. Um, so she actually, part of the reason for wanting to make it into a film was uh, the fact that she was traveling. Um, and so what we're going to do is take the piece that she said on the company and make it into a short dance film and just kind of try to highlight parts of the dance that you wouldn't normally see if you're watching the whole thing from stage. Um, so that'll be interesting. We're gonna do it the week of the show. We're gonna finish it because we are, we are actually performing that piece on Tuesday and Wednesday um, for our own production. And so we are gonna film it that week and it'll be, It'll be really, it'll be a challenge, but it's not something that we haven't done before is really work intensively on a project like that. So I'm excited about that. Nice. Very cool. And uh, we just only have a, a few minutes left before the end of the show, but I hope you wouldn't mind indulging me. And in, um, I always love to ask everybody random questions that uh, just to kind of get to know them. <laughs> I love the random questions. Oh, good, good, good. Um, well, I'm just going to pick some out of, out of my hat here that I don't have, but I you know, we'll say there's a hat. <laughs> um, so here's the first random question. Um, if there was a sandwich named after you, what would be on it? Ooh. Okay, I feel like I have to make a cohesive sandwich because I feel like I, lot of, I like a lot of different things, but like uh -huh. got a cohesive sandwich. Um, so I'll have to have burrata on it. I like recently had a sandwich with burrata on it and it changed my life. Um, prosciutto, because it goes Ooh. with burrata. Yeah. Um, pesto, because pesto is delicious. I would want a spicy kind of like pepper sauce. My husband makes spicy pickles for me. Um, like he got really into pickling and making sauerkraut pre-pandemic. So oh, um, wow. you have to have some something spicy on there. And um, like a like a cooked vegetable. I feel like if you do cooked things and like a raw vegetable, it doesn't it doesn't mix. So like right. maybe like some eggplant or oh. a portobello mushroom and maybe like some cooked spinach, but not like too cooked that it is slimy. Oh my God, you're making me hungry. It's time for lunch. I know, like, <laughs> did I eat really lunch good. today? I did not. <laughs> oh, no, that sounds really good. And then another random question. Um, what's your favorite guilty pleasure? <sighs> um, I'm, I'm a food oriented person. So for me, it's um, the Tonight Dough by Ben and Jerry's. If any of you've had that one, it's like- oh, I don't know if I've had that flavor. Oh, Jim, it's so good. It's, um, so it's like vanilla ice cream with cookie dough pieces and chocolate cookie pieces and peanut butter cookie pieces. And then I think there's like Oreos in it. It's just like- Oh everything that's good in this world all at once all at once um, yeah yes um that and i as far as like activity my other favorite activity is um i binge watch the same show over and over again i don't really like tv but i really like anything that is sherlock holmes related I oh love yeah everything sherlock holmes i've read every book i've watched the Sherlock Holmes TV shows in, from the 1940s that were, they used the same actor as the villain in every episode, but they just dressed him up differently with different facial hair. Oh Watched my gosh, Basil yes. Rathbone. Uh, but Basil. one of my favorites is um, Elementary uh, with, um, oh. Oh, what's it? Lucy Liu is Watson. Lucy and Liu. that just really like makes my life better because Lucy Liu is like the coolest ever. She's really um, cool. Yeah, that was a really- But I'll rewatch Elementary over and over again. It's so underrated. No one talks about it. And I'm like, this is such a good show. I uh, know Sherlock Holmes is a great, a, a great um, character. I mean, all yeah. time. Which is, it's funny because um, one of my like things that really irks me in life is the concept of genius. Um, I don't think genius exists. I, I think that, okay. you know, people have good ideas, but I think that there's nobody who's born a genius. So my oh, yeah. like love for Sherlock Holmes is like, okay. okay. Um, but what I love about it is that it, it, it appears to be genius, but it's really just a series of like skills and logic that he's developed over time, I guess. Right, right. Same thing with psych, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. Not really a psychic, but. But yeah, if yeah. you just put all the pieces together, then you you can come up with something. Yeah, well, that's, so I think well, that's my fascination with it. That's great. Well, uh, Meredith, I could I could chat all afternoon or all day or all evening, depending on when people are watching this or listening <laughs> to it. I could chat all day, but um, unfortunately, we do have to go. But before we do, um, give us all your 411, all your information about your dance group and how they can find you, all that good stuff. 
Cool. Um, so my website is still meredithlcabinets.com. I am in the midst of changing over to my new last name, but that's my website. And my Instagram is Meredith L. Ventura. And then everything related to my dance company is Sela Dance Collective. Everyone likes to say Sela, but it's Sela, S-E-L-A-H. If you just type in Sela Dance on anything, it'll pretty much come up us. So that's nice. us on YouTube, on Vimeo, on Instagram, on Facebook. Nice. And uh, Sela Dance Collective, is that the whole full? Yes. Panel? Nice. And um, you can look them up on all the social media. And um, if you'd like to learn more about the uh, Reemerge Dance Festival, you can go to the Center Stage website, centerstagetheater.org. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. And all the information on how to get tickets, reservations, et cetera, is right there on the website, centerstagetheater.org. And if you want to know what I'm up to, if you want to follow my show, it's Jim on the Air on Facebook and Instagram, Jim on the Air. You should follow him. He's cool and nice. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> oh, now I'm getting old. He was red. so delightful. No, I love, I love talking to Jim. You're great. Oh, and, and and you as well. It's a it's always an, a fun conversation. And again, it's Jim on the Air, and you can find my podcast on Anchor.fm, on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and about uh, four or five other platforms as well. Jim on the Air, look it up on Instagram or Facebook, and you'll find me. <laughs> mm -hmm. and and again, the uh, the festival takes place June 17th through the 20th, centerstagetheater.org for tickets. And Meredith, it was a delight to talk to you again. And we'll have to meet in person one of these days, maybe at the festival. I know, that that would be awesome. I will definitely be there um, the full weekend. So Nice, yeah. we'll have to do that. And thanks again for joining us, uh, Meredith, and everybody for listening and watching and all that good stuff. And we will catch you next time. And bye-bye, everybody.